United Nations troops push on in the cautious advance against the communists. An advance whose purpose, General Ridgway states, is not to seize ground, but to wipe out the enemy. The Chinese Red Army, fighting desperately in small isolated stands, prefers to give ground on wider fronts rather than join battle. And it's up to the infantry to clear out the pockets of die-hard communists. <laughs> grenade exposed in the face of Mr. John Howard in the early years of the Korean War. He tells this story with a laugh. Mr. Howard was an artillery gunner and infantryman who served in the 92nd Artillery and in the 24th and 7th Armies. Upon entering the 5th floor of the VA hospital, we encountered John leaving lunch. He greeted us with an amicable smile. His big and round bifocals looked silly on the tall man's face. As we were walking down the hallway to his room, he playfully claimed he would run over the guy in front of him because he was walking too slowly with his walker. As we entered the room, we noticed the TV set playing smooth jazz. We decided to leave it on during the duration of the interview. After getting settled in, we started by asking him about his early life. John Howard was born in Birmingham, Alabama. However, not long after, he moved to Painesville, Ohio, where he grew up. Howard, like many other children, played with marbles, hopscotch, and jumped rope. Howard often mentioned his grandpa, who he recalled as a quote-unquote mean and hard man. One specific example is when Howard had a bandage on his hand. His grandpa ripped it off and said, quote, there's nothing wrong with you, end quote. Howard told us that his grandfather's strict and rigid attitude helped him develop mentally and physically. He also recounts the lack of social interactions he had as a child. He remembers doing chores like chopping firewood and collecting coal off the railways to use as a fuel for the stove. When asked if he regrets the lack of social experience with his friends, he says he does not regret it at all. After graduating, John Howard worked at a Ford car factory. Mr. Howard was drafted in the early stages of the Korean War. Before being deployed to Korea, John received basic and artillery training. He often recounts the frequent bullying he received from his peers. One story he remembered is when his peers told him to bend over to kick his butt. He responded by pulling down his pants and saying, quote, Here, go ahead, end quote. Howard's actions show his great humor. While he was deployed in Korea, he noticed the state of carnage and poverty that wreaked havoc upon both Koreas. When asked about his opinion of the war, Mr. Howard replied it was bad and senseless. After hearing about his opinions of the war, he told about his time in the artillery division. His hearing difficulties were partly due to the deafening sound the artillery made when fired. Mr. Howard also talked about his experience at the Battle of Incheon. He said, while landing at Incheon, the water was freezing, it was ice cold. He told us while he was landing, the Chinese kept on attacking and shooting and moving around trying to fight off his unit. During the ensuing battle, he told us about these plane spotters. These were planes that flew at low altitudes that shot at the infantry. He um, also told us that he felt sorry for the soldiers on the front line, as they had to fight off these numerous plane spotters and also the artillery and tanks. While deployed on the long missions in Korea, John Howard often passed the time playing cards and talking with friends. He often said he had fond memories chasing the ladies. However, during a particularly cold winter, he got frostbite and had massive swelling in his jaw. During this time, he said many soldiers were freezing to death. He personally described it as, quote, 60 below zero, end quote. During this time, the army was also scarce on supplies. He often traded his cigarettes for food. Mr. Howard learned how to survive off of the little rations that the U.S. Army provided him and had to survive on a day-to-day -day basis. Not long after these hard winter days, Mr. Howard encountered, the war came to a close. 
with the armor strikes occurring at the 38th parallel. After the war, John Howard returned to Cleveland and received a hero's welcome. He said assimilating back into Cleveland was fairly easy. He found a job at the Diamond Alkaline Factory, a factory said that was no longer present today. Since then, he had many jobs, one of them working as a prison guard, another managing traffic, and countless others like working at the bank. Mr. Howard started a family and currently has three daughters. He talked about his love for animals and especially dogs since he had a dog when he was younger. John Howard had a neutral viewpoint about the war, saying, although war is a terrible thing, it can be used to defend just causes. When asked if he would serve again, if there was another Korean War, he responded, quote, I'll be there, end quote. He wanted to go back to Korea to defend the people against the Chinese and North Koreans. He concluded our interview by saying, quote, I regret nothing.